What is the difference between an oral appliance for sleep apnea and a TMJ orthotic? There's a lot of confusion regarding the differences between the two and they are not the same thing. So be sure to watch this video until the end so you can fully understand all the differences because they are important and you definitely want to go with the appliance that's right for you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Priya Mistri and I'm a general dentist with a practice in Vancouver, Washington. At my practice, we are dedicated to taking care of those with TMJ disorders. I am also a diplomat of the American Board of Dental Sleep Medicine. So I am well trained and well versed in fabricating appliances to treat sleep apnea. Again, be sure to stay tuned until the end of the video because at the end, I'm going to be showing the different appliances. I'm going to be showing an example of an oral appliance for sleep apnea, and I'm going to be showing an example of a TMJ orthotic. As a quick side note, if you are watching this and you have no idea what sleep apnea is, please watch my YouTube video called Sleep Apnea, UARS, and TMJD. I've linked it above, so be sure to watch that first and then come back to this video. It'll help you understand. So let's get started. Let's start with defining some terms, a definition of terms, if you will. Let's define night guard, TMJ orthotic, and oral appliance for sleep apnea, also called a sleep apnea appliance. A night guard is something that your dentist makes you or something that you can buy over the counter. Its purpose is to protect your teeth from the enormous forces of clenching and grinding. A night guard, a typical dental night guard, will fit on all the upper teeth or on all the lower teeth. It doesn't typically fit on the top and the bottom. Some night guards can be really small and just fit only in the front. So that's a night guard. To protect your teeth from clenching and grinding. A TMJ orthotic is not the same thing as a dental night guard, and it must be fabricated and fitted by a skilled and experienced TMJ dentist. TMJ orthotics are fabricated with a prescription built into them that is unique to the individual wearing them, sort of like prescription glasses. If you gave me your prescription glasses, I wouldn't be able to see clearly and vice versa. With TMJ orthotics, you have to get the optimal positioning of your jaw built into that orthotic and that optimal position is measured by a skilled TMJ dentist. I take these measurements using TENS therapy and a very specific jaw tracking technology and instrumentation. I call these measurements the prescription, which again is unique to every single individual. The prescription has a right and left position, a forward and back position, and a vertical position or dimension to it as well. The purpose of a TMJ orthotic is to treat the muscles and the joints to bring them back to a state of health and function and it also serves to protect the teeth as well. My TMJ orthotics, the way that I design them, they fit only on the top teeth or only on the bottom teeth. They do not fit on both arches. They don't fit on the top and the bottom. A sleep apnea appliance can have several different names. Some people call them MADS, M-A-D, mandibular advancement device or oral appliance for sleep apnea or sleep apnea appliance. I'm just going to be calling it sleep apnea appliance for the rest of the video because that's a little bit less of a mouthful. A sleep apnea appliance holds the jaw in a forward position to open the airway. That is its purpose. It treats sleep apnea by holding the airway open. Sleep apnea appliances must be FDA approved to be considered a sleep apnea appliance. They cover both dental arches and they have mechanisms built into them that do not allow the jaw to drop backwards, thereby obstructing the airway. So they hold the jaw forward, keeping the airway open. A TMJ orthotic, conversely, has a little bit more wiggle room. It doesn't hold or lock your jaw into a certain position. You can move around a little bit more on it. Because sleep apnea appliances cover the top and bottom teeth, just by the nature of that, that makes them a little bit bulky. And because they're bulky, they also end up protecting the teeth, which is a nice bonus. Sleep apnea appliances, though, do not treat the muscles and the joints that are contributing to TMJ problems. If you're new to all of this information, it can definitely be overwhelming. And if that's the case, just stop watching this video and instead watch the one that I've linked above and below. It's called OTC, over-the-counter night guard, versus dental night guard, 
versus TMJ orthotic. That breaks it down a little bit more. And then when you come back to this, it'll probably be a bit clearer. If you're following along just fine, then let's go ahead and continue. Let's talk a little bit about the correlation between TMJ problems and sleep apnea. Many people who have sleep apnea, especially when it's undiagnosed and therefore untreated, eventually end up with TMJ problems. Why is this, you may be wondering. This is because if you're struggling for oxygen at night in any way, your body will go into fight or flight mode. And fight or flight mode is a very stressful mode to be in. When our body is stuck in fight or flight mode, we tend to clench down and grind our teeth around with more force, more frequency, and for longer durations of time. Grinding the jaw forward actually opens the airway. So it's our brain's intuitive way of knowing, hey, this is how I can get a better oxygen saturation but all that clenching and grinding in time, night after night after night after night, will eventually lead to TMJ problems. These problems or symptoms include, but are not limited to, headaches, neck pain, jaw pain, ear pain, stuffy ears, dizziness, tinnitus or ear ringing, neck pain, shoulder pain, pain in the teeth or in the gums, or numbness or tingling in the face, or even the fingertips. So these problems are not fun to live with, but they can sort of be the tip of the iceberg for a lot of stuff going on under the surface, potentially even sleep apnea. So if you have TMJ issues and you know you have sleep apnea, what do you do? What do you treat first? Can you treat them both together? These are common questions that I get asked. If you have TMJ problems that are complex or severe, if your jaw is getting stuck where you can barely open more than one or two finger widths, if you're having daily or weekly headaches, neck pain, ear pain, if it's just really messing up the quality of your life, then I'd highly recommend that you treat the TMJ problem first. And the way I do that with a high success rate, well over 90%, is I make TMJ orthotics. I do a lot of soft tissue work, jaw manipulation, and frequent orthotic adjustments and appointments. For more information on my treatment methods, please check out my video, How I Treat TMJD. While you're getting the TMJ problems or the TMD treated, it's also important if you know you have sleep apnea to use a CPAP. Now, I know they're not beautiful or elegant, my friends, but they are life saving. Sleep apnea is a big deal, my friends. Even mild sleep apnea is twice as bad for you as it is to smoke every single day. Think about that. That's really bad for your body. So I feel like the term mild is like a misnomer. Sleep apnea is a big deal, whether it's mild, moderate or severe and it should be treated. Once my patients are done with TMJ treatment, once their symptoms are gone or they're drastically improved, then and only then do we move on to an oral appliance that I make for them, but I make it with the TMJ prescription built into it. And that is the key, my friends. Do all of my patients end up moving to this oral appliance with the TMJ prescription built into it? No. Some of them get so used to the CPAP that they actually end up liking it and they can't even sleep without it. So for those patients, for those people, they actually end up wearing the nighttime TMJ orthotic I make them and the CPAP. Other people will move into an oral appliance for sleep apnea that I would fabricate for them with their unique TMJ prescription built into it. If a sleep apnea appliance is used or it's trying to be used to treat TMD, that usually doesn't work out so well. And that's because for the TMJ orthotic to be made, not the sleep apnea appliance, for a TMJ orthotic to be made, very specific measurements have to be taken. And it's so specific and precise, it's precise down to tenths of a millimeter. That prescription is incredibly unique and it, in my opinion, requires a certain technology to be able to get that precise. Sleep apnea appliances, on the other hand, simply hold the jaw forward to open the airway. So they definitely have their purpose, but they're not appropriate for treating TMJ problems. And all the professionals across the board that are making sleep apnea appliances agree with that. And they agree with what I said earlier. If the TMJ problems are severe, do not get an oral appliance for sleep apnea made. Instead, treat the TMJ problem first and use a CPAP in the meantime. And then you can switch to an oral appliance with the blessing of your TMJ dentist.
This video is for informational purposes. So I'm not trying to bash any appliances or bash any dentists that are making them. I think that the majority of dentists are trying to do good. We're trying to help our patients and we're using the training that we had in dental school to do that. Most dental schools do not teach us how to diagnose and treat TMJ problems effectively. They also don't teach a whole lot on oral appliances for sleep apnea or at least they didn't when I went to dental school. Many of us dentists do understand, however, that there is a correlation between sleep apnea and TMJ problems. So I think it's easy to think that a sleep apnea appliance can be used to treat a TMJ problem. And that's just not the case, my friends. Just a few things now before I show you the appliances themselves. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. The more people that subscribe, the more these videos are pushed out into the internet, which can help more people, which is the goal of this channel. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, all the things. There's lots of information across all these platforms. So if you want quick and easy information, my other platforms, I deliver it a little bit faster. So let's talk a little bit about the appliances themselves. This right here is a sleep apnea appliance. There's a part that fits on the upper teeth and a part that fits on the lower teeth. And it has elastic bands that actually can be changed out to different lengths and different tensions, guiding the jaw forward, different amounts, and with different strengths. So these bands typically wear down over time as we grind our jaw forward and they do need to be replaced with this particular type of appliance. But this is what a sleep apnea appliance looks like. So again, it fits on both arches, top and bottom, and it has some sort of mechanism that helps to hold the jaw forward, thereby opening the airway. This right here is my TMJ orthotic. It may not look like much, my friends, but what it is, is it fits on the bottom. I typically make them to fit on the bottom. Every now and then I'll make a top one. And it has indentations all the way around that guide the upper teeth where to rest, putting the jaw in a very specific position. So the indentations built onto the top of this are specific to the upper cusps of the teeth for the person I'm making this for. So you feel around on it once you get it inside and you see where your upper teeth fit into the groove. So you actually have to move your jaw around once you try it in to find where your upper teeth fit into the grooves that are built into this. And the grooves are the important part. They are the prescription built into this that we spent tons of time and used a lot of technology to find. So this guides the jaw to a very specific position, allowing the muscles to relax and the joints to be decompressed and for things to heal. So that's really it, my friends. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. If so, please subscribe and share with your family and friends. Keep in mind that questions and comments are always welcome. And remember, my friends, you can never have TMI about TMJ. Thank you.